So when I was 10, my mom signed me up for Huang Mei Si, one of the most famous traditional Chinese opera. When I say traditional and Chinese, I mean this. Pretty delicate and fancy, right? But behind the stage, this is how the training process looked like. A typical training day will start with an hour's tiptoe walking that we called Zou Yuan Chao, followed by a gesture training where we were told to hold our hands up like this for at least 30 minutes. And once your muscles start to get tired and you feel like resting your hand posture down a bit, a ruler comes right in the way and you're forced to straighten your arms up again. And moving on to the worst part, singing. So you cannot have too much nasal resonance nor too much throat resonance. In order to reach the perfect tune, you have to shoot your words out like, Mao Cha Go! And let it bounce in the air like, Oh! What I shown was way far-fetched from a perfect tune. But anyway, you get it. I never really liked Huang Mei Opera. And not just because of the intimidating training process. I simply find it irrelevant. I told myself, well, since it's old and has no audiences aged below, above below 70, that means when I grow up to 30, there won't be any audiences left. And if there's no audience, What's the point of learning those conventional lyrics and gestures? And that is how I justify my lack of determination. So I give up, but only mentally, since my parents would never allow me to quit after putting so much money. Dragging myself to every single lesson, I would roll my eyes towards all those hardworking kids, thinking all their effort is just a waste of time. But like every single typical coming of age story, I met a guy, Dodo, who moved right next door to me. Well, don't get me wrong, there's nothing romantic between us. In fact, he soon became a very annoying competitor who was crazy about Western musical. When he sings and dances around the house, everyone in the neighborhood was mesmerized by his passion and enthusiasm. So my parents would compare my progress in Chinese opera with his in the musical, constantly preaching, why can't you just be like Dodo la? Well, I would just snare at those comments. But deep down in my heart, I was soaked in jealousy. Hearing the applauses towards his Western musicals would leave a sour taste in my mouth, like swallowing a full piece of lemon. And then I just feel like regretting not putting more effort into this not so important skill I possess. And then I start to question, why are Western musicals so popular while traditional Chinese opera remains obscure? Is it because Chinese opera is traditional? But what do we even consider as traditional? Well, using the easiest way, I ask Google, and this is what Google gives me. A bunch of traditional costumes that nobody would wear, besides special occasions like a TED talk on culture traditions. And then some runes from Greece, which doesn't have much differences from more than demolished buildings. A friend of mine even asked me why someone just find a broom and swipe all this up? Well, but there is something in common, no matter it is traditional costumes or ancient Greek runes. When we label them as traditional, we see them as heritage, like something that was dead, passed down from history. We stop seeing them as living practices or living objects that still hold a significance. Therefore, their presence in this modern society starts to become something abnormal. See, if I wear this traditional costume out on the street, people will stare because it is uncommon. To them, this outfit no longer fulfills the practical requirements 
of this modern society. But is there really no way that traditionals cannot be out of date? I believe no. Two years ago, I went to the birthplace of traditional opera, where we were told to document its past developments. To my surprise, I discovered that Huangmei Opera was never meant to be something irrelevant from life. Instead, it originated from the normal people, the tea pluckers' storytelling, as a way to entertain themselves. Over time, the opera keeps on adapting to this changing society. It becomes a form of culture storage, filled with tales from the tea plucklers, the ancient emperors, and then warriors that fought in World War II. And now, it has passed on to our generation. It is up to us to use these reservoirs by adding our own stories inside. We are given the opportunity to use Huangmei Opera as a bridge that links between the past and the present. And just like the traditional operas, the practical values of the traditionals lie in its ability to link between time and connect between generations. It lies in the intangibles which connects the present and the past. So when we adapt it and take something from the past and change it into the present, we are preserving the cultures. Through this, we gain a better understanding of our own identity and a better understanding of the world around us. So next time, if you see someone wearing a traditional costume like me, please don't be surprised. It's simply a revival of power from the past. Thank you.